Do you think it's accurate to say that schools and society in the job market favor certain fields of study more than others? Uh, to get a sense of what our society values in education, all you have to do is listen to presidents and other politicians. It doesn't matter if they're Democratic or Republican. All of the talk about education is about STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, math. And that's not because these are inherently more valuable than literature, history, or music. It's because that's what translates into financial success. So the focus of education, when people talk about it outside of education, has to do with economics, not about the intrinsic value of learning. And that ought to make everyone nervous, including mathematicians. What kind of impact do you think that has on students and maybe society in general? Um, the problem isn't just that, say, math and science are valued more than history and music. Uh, it's that education itself is seen as just a means to an end. Stay in school, get a diploma, that's your credential, you can earn more money. That inherently devalues everything that goes on in school and the act of learning itself. It's seen as just something I've got to get through in order to make more bucks. With that being said, um, I don't know how much you can speak to this, but how much influence do you think society then and politics have on students' decisions to quit subjects like music that aren't in a STEM field? I think kids give up on music for several reasons. First, because schools tend not to value it as much, and society itself says, how are you going to make a living off of that, as if that's the only reason to do something. But I think there are other ways that we subtly and not so subtly discourage students from uh, loving music and continuing to want to enjoy it and play it. Um, for one thing, we set up music as a competition, as we do with so many other things, where you've got to compete for first chair, where you go to a, a band festival, and it's not really a festival, it's a contest. It's about how can we succeed at the price of other people's failure. Um, and I think we do it also by telling kids, uh, you got to practice more and you got to do it the way I said, so you have no say about what's going on. If we want kids to love music, we have to rethink a lot of what we do around the way things are taught in general. Give kids um, more choices about what they're doing. Um, stop offering rewards for success, which implicitly devalue whatever you have to do to get the reward. And above all, stop turning it into a contest. Um, what would you say to parents and students who say that it's important to focus more on those core subjects or STEM subjects like science and math because that's just how you get into college? I think there are several problems with thinking just in terms of college admission. Um, one is that people often get it wrong. And colleges are often as interested in outstanding musicians as they are in outstanding scientists. But I think the real problem is seeing high school as something that's just a preparation. What do I have to do in order to groom my transcript so that I'll get into uh, the most selective college of my parents cho of my choice? Um, and uh, that's a problem. Yes. Going to college makes sense for a lot of people. And yes, a lot of other people want to go to colleges, especially those that are viewed, rightly or wrongly, as more prestigious. But if that means giving up on my love of playing the oboe or, or singing or anything else, then it's not worth sacrificing what provides real pleasure now in the hope that I can beat more people to get into a selective college later. Kind of related, what might you say to the parents and students who say it's important to focus on those core subjects because that's how you get a job? Um, I don't think high school students do or should operate in a vacuum, pretending that it will never be relevant to think about employment. But I'm much more worried about high school students and especially their parents and teachers who are much too focused on what's coming years down the line. And this is all part of this tendency to see everything we're doing as nothing more than preparation for what comes later. Um, I don't think that's a good way to look at school. Uh, it's the way a lot of people look at high school in part because high schools are not terribly engaging. 
kids have very little to say about what they're doing. High schools are excellent preparation for the real world, assuming you live in a totalitarian society where students are given almost no voice in what they're doing. And so the only reason we can offer them to keep doing whatever it is, is you'll get into college or you'll make more money later. And just the fact of framing that has been shown by researchers to make students less engaged than they would otherwise be in whatever it is they're doing. I'm curious if you have anything to say about this. What about, uh, there's sort of an argument that studying science and math will help our society more than studying the arts. For example, people might argue that there's more value in performing a life-saving surgery or developing a new technology than putting on a good musical performance. Now, this is what philosophers call a utilitarian justification for what we do. Um, and uh, I'm certainly more interested in having a doctor around if I'm having a heart attack than having a violinist around. But we're not always having heart attacks, and life is about more than just building bridges or performing surgery. Life is about the value we take from ourselves, from one another, from um, ideals that transcend us, and they're about the joy um, that comes from the arts as well. Uh, life would be pretty dreary if we thought only in utilitarian terms about what provides a kind of practical benefit at the moment. Um, we would lose, um, I think, an incalculable amount. And by the way, incalculable is a good word to use here, because along with this utilitarian sentiment that says, how are you going to make it pay? Show me the practical advantage. We also tend to reduce everything to numbers. And some things, like the value of music, can't really be quantified. What would you tell a high school student who's more interested in music than other fields, but is scared about making a living as a musician? You touched on this a little bit. Uh, should that type of student go after the job that will make more money, or should they pursue music and risk getting a low-paying job or no job at all, possibly? I wouldn't presume to advise people I haven't met on career paths because I don't know their values and preferences. All I can say is the following, which is based on research. The more young adults are focused on extrinsic rewards, like being rich or famous, the less happy and satisfied they tend to be. Such people are much more um, susceptible to depression and anger. They're more likely to smoke. Their lives are drearier in general. It's one thing to say, I've got to make a living, and it's not easy to get a job that allows me to pay the rent. I have to focus on that. It's naive not to. But some people use that fact to justify a single-minded focus on things like uh, money. And I think that's a problem. Because otherwise, you wake up years down the line and say, what the hell happened to my life? I was so busy thinking about how I'm going to make more and get more stuff that I've lost track of how I can do good in the world and how I can do something that I find genuinely pleasurable. I've talked to uh, many students who say they have trouble staying involved in music because of time commitments with sports. If we were to assume that sports are generally more competitive than music, maybe not always the case, but uh, then are there dangers associated with sports involvement that these students should know about? Yes, beyond concussions and the like, um, sports are collectively an activity where we can succeed only if we make other people fail. That's not necessary for having a good time outside. It's not necessary for being healthy in a physical sense, learning skills and so on. But our culture has taken recreation and turned it into an activity that's highly structured and that's about victory rather than just pleasure. Um, some people do well at it. Some people are forced to do it or um, made to think that there's something wrong with them if they are not good athletes. I think that's a problem. My inclination in general, and not just because I didn't do athletics and I do have some interest in music personally, but more generally, is find an activity where a bunch of people can get together and develop a real sense of camaraderie without having to defeat other people in the process. A lot of the students I interviewed so far said that if grades didn't exist, 
They would spend more time on things that they're interested in, like music. So then why do you think we have to have grades? Why do they exist? We don't have to have grades. Research shows that grades have three effects. One, they make students less interested in whatever they're learning for a grade. Two, they become less likely to pick something more difficult. After all, if the point is to get an A, you're going to choose the shortest book or the easiest project because that makes it more likely you'll get the A. And three, when students are graded, they tend to do things in a more shallow or superficial fashion. They're less likely to really push and reflect and more likely to say, do we have to know this? Is this going to be on the test? That's why the best schools do not grade students, and the best teachers do everything in their power to help students forget that grades exist, and sometimes let students pick their own grades. So we live in a society now where people don't get it. They ignore this research, and they use grades to compel students to do stuff that they understandably have little interest in doing. If I'm a teacher and I don't have the skill to authentically engage students in um, science or history or literature, then I have to fall back on bribes and threats to make them do it. And that's what grades are about. Not assessment, not a necessary way of reporting results. They're about um, coercion. And when students get caught up in this trap arguing about or worried about tenths of a point on their GPA, then they're going to make bad choices about which courses to take and how to allocate their time. Um, a lot of people say that kids just wouldn't work as hard if we got rid of the grades. And maybe related to that is um, uh, high school teachers, maybe, you know, I personally feel like the students I work with have almost been indoctrinated to um, follow where the grades lead them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's difficult to try a new approach when they're trained that way. Uh, so what, what would you say to that? I think it is true that students who for all of their career have been told, this is going to be on the midterm, folks, or you better listen up, this counts for your grade, get the idea that that's the reason to do stuff, is to get a grade and don't bother doing stuff that isn't graded. It would be amazing if students were immune to that constant drumbeat. But the reality is, every time they think in terms of what am I going to do for a grade, they lose something as people and as learners. And so a teacher who has any sense of integrity and commitment to learning is going to spend most of his or her career trying to help students overcome this addiction. Not just by telling them, forget about the grade, but by making grades less and less relevant and important. So that the natural desire to do stuff that really provides a sense of satisfaction can be rediscovered by students who sometimes have forgotten what gives them pleasure. You know, I mean, I think that's critical. Otherwise, you have a bunch of grade grubbers, and I don't blame the students for that. I blame the adults who told them that this is the reason to do stuff. I hear from students all the time who have finally shaken free of this and said, screw it. What I, I am sacrificing my entire high school career uh, in search of the almighty A here. And the result is I'm... I'm cutting corners ethically by cheating, and I'm, and I'm not being true to myself. You know, I forget that I even really liked photography or, or whatever. I didn't sign up for it because it doesn't, doesn't give me an extra, an extra point. I'm not going to do that anymore. This is now going to be about learning. It's not going to be about chasing a grade. And it's sad that students are in a position where they have to swim against the tide. That's why I spend my time working with teachers and parents to try to change the tide. Okay, I think this may be my last question. Do you think there might be societal problems, though, if we got rid of grades completely? For example, that might mean kids would only pursue the subjects they had the most fun with, and then maybe we would have a shortage of well-qualified students for certain professions? I have no reason to think that there would be larger social implications that would be negative from getting rid of grades. And in fact, we can look at schools, including some high schools in the U.S., uh, that have gotten rid of grades, 
And those students are not only a lot happier, they're a lot better prepared for careers and for college, precisely because they've spent their high school years um, sampling, exploring, discovering, figuring stuff out without worrying all the time, what is this going to mean for my GPA? So we have not just good theory, but good practice to show that the abolition of grades would do nothing but good. It would only make life more complicated for bad teachers who would now have no lever to compel kids to do stuff that doesn't make sense to do in the first place.